In this video, we're going to see how to modelize the climate. But first of all, we need to know which system we want to represent. The climate results from interactions between many reservoirs over very different time scales. The atmosphere has a very short time scale, about approximately up to 10 years. And the interaction between the atmosphere and uh, reservoirs with longer time scales changes the climate. The ocean, for instance, or uh, the biosphere, sometimes we have seasonal variations, sometimes uh, a very larger time scale. Now, the solar energy falling in the atmosphere and the uh, ocean are the two components that need to be present in a climate model so that we can represent the transport and the redistribution of the solar energy between the equatorial areas and the poles. A digital model, climate model, results from a sum of models based on observations it is necessary to formalize the uh, physical problem in the form of an equation. The mathematical model will be used, and then discretization will be used in order to produce a digital model, which will need to comply with conservation laws, such as the energy or mass conservation laws. Next, there is the code, the set of digital programs which are provided to the computer in order to perform the calculations. The climate model means that we have to predict the whole working environment, prepare the working environment in the computer to follow simulations and be able to exploit them. The equation system we use is derived from uh, the uh, mechanics of flows in the rotating uh, medium, and some simplifying hypotheses were, were drawn, such as the round Earth, and uh, the hypothesis level depends on the model. These are general circulation or general flow models. Here I have indicated the equations of an atmosphere model where we have uh, motion equations and flow equations. The variables are the wind, the temperature, humidity, and the equations, such as the motion equations, will use uh, sources and uh, sinks for energy that need to be shown. In the uh, rotating uh, motion, the Coriolis force will be taken into consideration because it is responsible for large variations in the atmospheric flow or circulation. A model means also that you have to have a grid, a meshing. The Earth must be divided in small cubes. This is a three-dimensional meshing with a horizontal discretization and vertical discretization. Representing the climate means finding a compromise between space and time for simulation. Hence, it is necessary to represent the phenomena at the sub-mesh scale, approximately 200 kilometers, developing uh, parameter techniques in order to find the sub-mesh physical characteristics in order to be able to show all the small-scale processes. Here, for instance, clouds that are shown on this picture. Now, from one model to another, there might be huge differences, such as the level of complexity in the various types of parameters introduced in the model. As I said, there are many different reservoirs involved and also many different processes to represent the climate model. I talked about the atmosphere, I talked about the clouds, but in atmosphere models, we can also show other features such as radiation, raindrops, rain, vegetation, the change of the leaves over from one season to the next, the ground, the ocean with uh, marine movements and vertical circulation, and finally, transfer, heat transfers 
through uh, the ice and the motion of ice on the ocean. A digital experience is the sum of simulations performed to answer one specific question regarding the climate. To be able to use the models that I just described, first of all, we need to prescribe in order to make a simulation in all the grid points, initial conditions. So we prescribe initial conditions for temperature, humidity, currents, winds, characteristic of a baseline situation, a specific day during the year. During the simulation, we then vary the limitation condition, the border conditions, such as sun radiation or the uh, types of uh, greenhouse effect gases present in the atmosphere or the evolution of continental surfaces depending on human activity. The simulations result will provide a number of uh, IT files for each of the grid, the points on the grid and each of the reservoirs. We can see the evolution over time of temperature, humidity, currents, and a number of diagnoses in order to exploit the simulations. Now, talking about the climate, usually the way we do this is the following. The first simulation is a reference simulation. For instance, we use the current climate as a reference simulation, and then we simulate a uh, climate during which there is something disrupted. Uh, we change the uh, one of the parameters, we change the uh, composition in uh, CO2 by 1% per year during the simulation until it becomes stabilized. And by comparing the results of the two simulations, we can understand how the climatic system functions, how it reacts to the uh, disruption, and we can study the climate and the climatic changes.